You know, part of the challenges that comes as a result of the word, all the challenges must bow down to what is written. Celebrate Jesus, hallelujah, an awesome God. He's going to do an awesome thing in your life, hallelujah. If there is any time you don't need to joke with, we know it. It's always the first time, the first day of the month. We don't joke with the first day of the month. So why? God is the Alpha. He is the Omega, hallelujah. He has Alpha this month again. Glory be to the Lamb of God. The Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. The first thing belongs to God. He is the first and He is the last. That's why we don't joke with every beginning of the month. It doesn't matter what it is. Don't play with the beginning of the month. How you start the beginning of the month will determine how the month is going to be for you. Will determine how that month is going to end. Hallelujah. I believe this month is going to end well for every one of us. Because we are starting in a very you know, strong and glorious note tonight. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a month of delivery. It's a time to release all the things that you have been carrying on the inside of you. Your dreams, your potentials, your expectations. All the things that you have been trusting God for. Maybe you did not see it in the first month. You did not see it in the second month or the third month, the fourth month. The fifth month has come and gone. The sixth month has come and gone. The seventh month has come and gone. The eighth month has come and gone. This is the ninth month. Whatever you are carrying in your womb, you must deliver them this time. In the mighty name of Jesus, you must deliver them this time. You must deliver that dream this time. You must deliver that expectation this time. In the mighty name of Jesus. It's not going to be by might. It's not going to be by power. But by my spirit, say it, the Lord of hosts. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, the time, the beginning of the month is always a time to speak. It's a time to declare your expectation. It's a time to declare what you can see about the new month. Because if God sees you right now, or if you have been tuned, if you are in tune with the frequency of heaven, you would have been hearing God asking you, my son, my daughter, what can you see about this new month? What can you see? What can you see? God works with people who can see something, who can see what God is saying. People that can see what God is saying. They came to Jeremiah. Remember, you told Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what's yet thou? He said, I see a rod of an almond tree. God said, Thou hast seen well. Why? Because I will hasten my word to perform it. Every time you see according to what the Lord is saying, He will hasten His word to perform it. He will hasten. When you see a line with what God is saying, he will hasten his word to perform that which you are saying. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Whatever you are seeing this month, however you are seeing this one to be for you, God is going to perfect and to perform that dream that is in your heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, believe in amen. So it's a time to see. It's also a time to speak what you are saying. You don't just see it, but you declare what you are saying. You declare what you are saying. You declare what you are saying. Hallelujah. What you don't declare, you don't desire. What you don't declare, you don't desire. So when you see it, I can see the glorious future. I can see this. I can see this. I can see this. Hallelujah. Just as say, I can see sun and the moon and the star bowing down to me. He saw it and he declared it. And he became it. He saw it, he declared it, and he became it. Joseph said it. I can see the sun and the moon bowing down to me. And as he saw it, he declared it. It doesn't matter the fights that will come after he declared it. It doesn't matter the trials that will come after the world. Never mind what is happening. Anything that is happening will always bow down to what is written. Hallelujah. Whatever is happening must bow down to what is written. Whatever negative situation must bow down to what is written. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So whatever you are declaring this hour, whatever you are saying, whatever you are sounding on the mountain top, it doesn't matter the challenges that comes as a result of the word, all the challenges must bow down to what is written. 
Somebody say, Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wherever you are watching, I welcome you in the name of the Lord. And I salute you greatly on this first night of the supernatural recovery. Awesome service. Awesome service. You will never remain the same. You will never. Your destiny will never remain the same again. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. My God is going to settle issues concerning you. Settle issues concerning you. Concerning your life, concerning your destiny. God is going to settle issues upon this mountain. These three nights, don't joke with it for anything. Don't joke with it. The Lord is going to visit you. He's going to do incredible things in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the name of God. Are you rise up on your feet as you make some brutal declaration this evening? Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of God. Somebody say Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit. This month of September, I must produce a supernatural result. This month of September, I must produce a supernatural result in the name of Jesus. Say Holy Spirit. This month of September, I must produce a supernatural result. I must encounter a supernatural result. Say, I must harvest a supernatural harvest. Say, this one of September, I am stepping in into a supernatural harvest. Supernatural harvest. Say, in my finances, in my business, in my career, in my family, in my life, I am going to experience a supernatural harvest. This one of September, in the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Say, Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. Say, Holy Spirit. You enter into Moses. And Moses spoke to the rock. And the rock brought us water. You enter into Elijah. And Elijah spoke. And fire fell. You enter into Mary. And Mary conceived. And gave birth to the supernatural. Say, this month, Holy Ghost, you dwell on the inside of me. You live in me. I must produce. A supernatural result. I must produce a supernatural result. Holy Spirit, you live in me. My results this month must be extraordinary. It must be supernatural. I'm going to give birth to the supernatural because Holy Ghost, you live on the inside of me. He that is in me, you are a spirit. Therefore, I must give birth to the supernatural. I must experience a supernatural. This month of September, in the name of Jesus, supernatural harvest is my portion. This month of September, I must experience supernatural results. I must command the supernatural. This month of September, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Shout the believe in Amen. Shout the triumphant Amen. amen. Glory be to the love of God. Hallelujah. He entered into Moses. Moses speak to the rock. Rock obey. He entered into Elijah. Elijah spoke. And the fire fell. He entered into Mary. And Mary conceived. A virgin conceived. And gave birth to something that is bigger than her. <laughs> something bigger than her. That was the Holy Spirit coming upon them. But you and I, the Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of us. If the Holy Spirit is living in you, then why should you live like an ordinary person? Why should you be producing ordinary results? Why should you be like ordinary person, ordinary human being? A spirit lives in you, the Holy Ghost. You are made to command supernatural results. You are made to do exploits. You are made not to live like a human, ordinary human being. You are a spirit being. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is spirit. The Holy Spirit dwells on the inside of you. What must come out of your life must be supernatural. It must be something the world must envy. 
It must be something that will amaze the world, something that will be coming out of you. And I prophesy over you this month of September. Great results, supernatural results are coming out of your life, coming out of your destiny in the name of Jesus. Glory to the love of God. Supernatural harvest, they want. Ready, ready to roll our anchor scripture for tonight. Thank you, Jesus. E o do você, você mal sorou, e o de Elija, Elija vai no sorro e no cor, e o de Maria, Maria viu no da alaie, o do meu. Rebuke. It's a prophecy that this end time, 
The tabernacle of David will be rebuilt. Glory be the love of God. <laughs> hey, I will rebuild it. And I will bring back the glory. Never forget God kept on sounding that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. He was going to rebuild. He's going to reconstruct. He's going to restore. He's going to revive. He's going to renew. The things that the enemy has thrown him down. The thing that the enemy has rubbish. This world tonight might be for one person. That the enemy has messed up your spiritual life. The enemy has messed up your spiritual life. And he messed up. Like the tabernacle of David that was thrown down. Your spiritual life has been messed up. You that the world used to celebrate. They call you child of God. They call you a woman of God. They call you a man of God. They call you serious believer. But right now, you will come back to your forbids. You will come back to your forbids. To the extent that now you smoke, you will drink all kinds of things. The enemy has rubbish your spiritual experience. But if you believe in these three days, God said, I will restore. I will revive. I will rebuild again the tabernacle of David. If I've been talking about you, the thing that the enemy has stolen, the thing that the enemy has pulled down in your life, your faith has gone down. Your spiritual life has gone down. Your relationship with God has gone down. But he said, I will rebuild it again. I will restore you back to the faith. And this time again, you are not going to pass it anymore. Shout a believing amen if you are there. Glory be to the name of God. Verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom. And of all the heathen which are called by my name. Save the Lord that doeth this. Verse 13. Behold the day is come. Say the Lord that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the trailer of grace. Him that soweth seed. And the mountain shall cross with wine. And the, all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the west cities, and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruits of them, and I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled out, and they will be out of their land, which I have given them, says the Lord thy God. Somebody say, believe it, amen. Glory be to the love of God. How does supernatural harvest come in into these scriptures? You say, after when I begin to restore, when I begin to raise up the tabernacle of David, he made a promise of restoration to his people. So, one of the restoration is what we call a supernatural harvest. And we can see that in this verse 13. That behold, it is come, said the Lord, and Plowman shall overtake the reaper. A plowman. <laughs> somebody that is just planted a seed, overtaking somebody that is already reaping the harvest. Just come to the picture of that scripture. A plowman is just putting the seed in the ground. But God said, the man that is just putting the seed in the ground shall overtake somebody who is already reaping the harvest. As I was praying, the Holy Ghost, I love him so much, he just gave it to me poverty. He said, you are gone. <laughs> oh my goodness. He said, you are gone. He can turn your seed into trees. God can turn your seed into trees. The plowman overtaking the reaper. You are just about to plant the seed, but others are already reaping the harvest. But God said you will overtake them. How will it? How is it going to happen that I'm just planting the seed, and these ones are already reaping the harvest? And God said I'm going to overtake them. It is supernatural harvest. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. He can make your seed 
that tiny grain of, of maize you want to put in the ground. Others are already harvesting their maize. God said, as you put that seed in the ground, I will cause it to erupt overnight to become a tree that you begin to harvest to the extent that you will harvest and harvest beyond people that have started harvesting before you. That's incredible. A plowman had overtaken the river. One of the translations says something. He said, you will have plenty of food more than enough that you will eat that meal, oh my God, that the food will not finish until the time of another harvest. That is, harvest will be meeting the harvest in your hand. Harvest, meeting the harvest in your hand. You know, it's not like in the situation where by just the money that comes into your hand every week. Before the week runs out, the money is finished. And you're waiting for another money to come another time. But that is not supernatural harvest. He said, this time around, harvest will be meeting up with harvest. Harvest meeting with harvest. Harvest meeting with harvest. You know what that means? You have not finished the harvest that is at hand. Another harvest will meet up with that one. Before the planting season, another harvest. Harvest overflowing. Harvest tumbling upon each other. If they are receiving that same believing, amen. The power man shall overtake the river as you put your seed. God can turn it into a tree overnight. It's a supernatural thing that God does. Number two, he said, supernatural harvest is that your little cup of water, God can turn it to an ocean. Your little cup of water, God can turn it into an ocean. That is, I'm just giving you a picture of a supernatural harvest, not a natural harvest. A supernatural. A natural harvest is you planted maize here, and after some months, yes, you wait for some months before the harvest time, and then you can harvest what you planted. But this time around, as you are putting the seed down, the harvest is erupted. It can only be gone. As you're putting the seed down, the harvest is around it. Another picture you want to capture is just like you starting a business. Every other person is doing that business and doing that business, and you, you are just coming in to start that business. And as you start that business, just overnight, you begin to overtake all the people that started that business before you. You are business and you are turned over. We start running over that you overtake all the people that started doing that business before you. That is something supernatural happening. Something supernatural happening. The plow man shall overtake the river. Woo! And the bread that's of great him that sow in the sea. And the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Supernatural things. That Jehovah wants to do this month of September is a month of multiplication. Things be multiply, 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 multiply. He will turn your seed into trees. He will turn your little cup of water into an ocean, and then. He began to remind me, he said, the little boy that he asked him a question when Jesus asked the disciples, I said, what do we have? They said, we have just five breads and two, and two fishes. How can that one, how on earth can five bread and two fishes feed a multitude of 5,000 women that even they are not even counted men? That is supernatural harvest. They put the fish and the bread in the hand of Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus blessed him and gave to the disciples, and the team began to multiply. 5,000, everybody was filled up, and then 12 baskets filled up, left over. That is supernatural harvest. This month of September, I prophesied supernatural harvest in your finances, in your family, in your business, in your career. Receive it in the name of Jesus. 
five bread and two loaves of fishes fed the whole multitudes. How did it happen? Go and ask God. A plowman shall overturn the river. And then he asked me a question. He said, what is the income of a slave? And what is the income of a prisoner? Can you calculate? Can you, what do you think that a slave can earn and a prisoner can earn? What was the income of Joseph in the prison? And what was the income of Esther as a Jewish slave? Then God of the supernatural harvest skyrocketed their promotion from a slave to a queen. Check the income or the salary or allowance of a slave to that of a queen. <laughs> and check the income of a prisoner, Joseph, to that of the prime minister. It can only be God. God said this is part of the restoration package I have for my children. I have for the church this end time. Nobody can stop it. Nobody can do it. As long as we hold on to God and walk in his ways, it is bound to happen. And it will happen in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. All this is to create a picture of the supernatural harvest. So that this month of September, you will not expect people from God. So that your eyes will be open wide to see that the harvest is wide. And God will be doing it by his own self. Somebody say, believe it. Amen. amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. 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 Amos chapter 9. There are about five things or six things that we brought up from this scripture of this restoration package of God. And then we pray. This is the first night. I don't want to keep anybody waiting. But I know God is already blessing somebody. Hallelujah. Supernatural harvest. It will answer in your life this month. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, believe it, amen. Hallelujah. Amos chapter 9. Verse 14. And I will bring again the captivity of my people. Okay. I'll start from that to verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen, which are called by my name, saying the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, the plumber shall overtake the river, and so on and so forth. That one is that talks about supernatural harvest number one. A speedy, a speedy harvest. A speedy harvest. Then he said that the mountains shall drop sweet wine. That is a new anointing. A new grace. A fresh anointing is coming upon you tonight. Wherever you are watching, a new anointing, a new anointing, a fresh grace, fresh anointing. Like a new born baby, something new is happening to you this month in the name of Jesus. A new anointing. Number one is speedy harvest or supernatural harvest. Number two is a new anointing. Number three is supernatural turnarounds. Things are going to turn around. Things are going to turn around. Things are going to turn around. Verse 14, and I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build with cities and inhabit them. Restoration. Restoration. And they shall plant vineyards and drink of the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. That is, you will no longer build for another person to inhabit. You are not going to plant vineyards for another person to eat. We are not going to labor for another person to come and consume the fruit of their labor. Somebody say, God forbid. It is a terrible thing for you to labor and somebody comes to eat the fruit of their labor. It's a bad thing for you to plant and somebody comes to drink of your barrier. 
that you have planted. It is a terrible thing for you to build without inhabiting what you have built. You build houses, you could not inhabit it. It's a terrible thing. But God said, this is my package. This is my plan for my children. This is the restoration of my children. They will build and they will inhabit it. They will plant vineyards and they are going to bring up the vineyard. Hallelujah. They are going to build houses and they are going to inhabit those houses. Shout and believe in Amen. Glory be to the love of God. You build a house, you are going to inhabit, you are going to enjoy the fruit of your labor. You are going to eat the fruit of your labor. You are going to eat the fruit of your labor. You are going to eat the fruit of your labor. You are going to eat the fruit of your labor. You are going to eat the fruit of your labor. The Bible says, in every labor there is profit. Every profit that the enemy has been eluding you. This month of September, they are returning back in areas. In areas. In areas. In areas. In the name of Jesus. So, supernatural harvest. That is city harvest. A new anointing. Divine turnarounds. Divine restoration. And then what did you say again? The beggar is at the food thereof. Verse 15. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled out of their land, which I have given them, says the Lord thy God. Divine establishment. Divine establishment. Divine establishment. Somebody might be at work or in an organization. They have put you on probation for a long time. They have worked and worked and worked. They have refused to make you permanent in that job. These three days, the helping hand of God is going to work on your behalf and you are going to receive your permanency in the name of Jesus. You are Settlement in that job, your establishment in that job shall be fully confirmed by the time of the program in the name of Jesus Christ. Shout to me, amen. God promised that he was going to establish them. Divine establishment. Establishment in your career. Establishment in your destiny. Establishment of your marriage. Establishment of your business. Establishment of your ministry. The God who is going to raise up the tabernacle of David, he will establish us in the name of Jesus. You see, and nobody dares try to pull you out of where God has planted you. Nobody can take you away. Where God plants you, no devil can uproot you. Where God plants you, where God establishes you, nobody can take you away. Glory be to the name of God. Jehovah that establishes. He will visit you this morning, this night. He will visit you tomorrow night. He will visit you on Friday. And your life will be turned around in the name of Jesus. Divine establishment. Lastly, God will, every of the word of God will always leave us with a responsibility. Every prophetic word will always leave you and I with a responsibility. It's not just to receive the blessings, but there is a condition attached to the blessing. And once you meet up with the terms of the blessing, automatically the blessings will flow. So if you want to witness these blessings, this month of September, you want to see God coming in full force, to give you supernatural harvest. You want to receive a new anointing from God. You want a speedy harvest. Hallelujah. You know, my God, there are some people, there are some harvests that have been hijacked in the spirit world. Some prayer seed, some money seed, some fasting seed, so many seed, hospitality seed. The good, good things you have done, there is no reward. You have sown, you have given, you have planted, you have prayed, you have fasted. But it is not coming down. The reward is not coming down. No, it's not good. It's been hijacked in the heavenlies. But I prophesy. <laughs> I prophesy in the name of the Lord. Every hijacked blessing, every hijacked blessing, every hijacked harvest, I see them coming down as a torrential rain in the name of Jesus. I said, let them begin to rain down. 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 Let your harvest begin to rain down. 
Make your house begin to rain down. Make you begin to rain down. Rain down, rain down, rain down, rain down. In the name of Jesus. What is this responsibility? I was in a dream yesterday night and God showed me countless, so many huge amounts of people gathered around about me, expecting to receive a word of God from my mouth. And I saw an elderly woman crying out. All her request was that her child may know God, her son. In that dream, the son was misbehaving. This son was misbehaving, behaving all kinds of, doing all kinds of irrational, irrational things, misbehaving. And the prayer of that woman was that, God, let my son know God. Let my son come to the knowledge of the truth. That was all her prayer. And I came to her in that dream. I said, Mama, is that all you want? She said, that's what I want. I just want this boy to repent and to know God. And I told her, if that is your desire, it is done. And after that dream, I got to know that the harvest is ripe. The harvest, the end time harvest has begun. The harvest is ripe. The harvest is ripe. All over the world, people are crying out, looking for a savior, looking for help, looking for somebody who will point them to the right way. Looking for somebody to show them the two lights that light let everyone that come into the world. Everybody is trusting God. Everybody is looking for the way out to show them the real, the personality. Jesus is so the living God. Because so many have been deceived. So many have been lied against. So many have been misled. People are crying. Looking for Jesus. The savior of the world. That is the responsibility. That is the responsibility. Soul winning is a proof that you are in love with God. Loving God is not by God, I love you. It's not by pro, it's not by you know, verbal pronunciation or, or proclaiming proclamation. It's not by verbal proclamation. Soul winning is a proof that you are in love with God. Soul winning is a proof. That you are preparing for the coming of Jesus. He will say, Ah, Jesus is about to come. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. It does not mean you're going to start packing your clothes in your boxes. That's not how to prepare for the coming of Jesus. You don't prepare for Jesus packing your cars in your garage and getting ready, packing your food aside. You are not going nowhere with them. Your preparation for the coming of Jesus is so winning when you are winning so. You are preparing for the coming of Jesus. The Bible says, Blessed is that person that when the master returns, you will find them doing the work of God. May God find you doing the work of God when he returns. In the mighty name of Jesus. And lastly, so it is a proof that you are, you are, you are it's a proof of your obedience and loyalty to God. So it is a proof. Of your obedience and your loyalty to God, the God of heaven. I love God. I obey God. And you are not concerned if anybody goes to hell. You are not concerned about people that are dying. You are not concerned about souls that are being wasted. Hallelujah. It doesn't show the proof of your obedience and loyalty to God. Let's go out there at the gate. And bear the reproach of the master. Let's go and save souls. That's your responsibility. That's what he asked me to tell you. That is the responsibility. The harvest is ripe. The Bible says, put in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. Put in the sickle. For the harvest is ripe. So the major harvest we are talking about is the harvest of the souls of men. Not just want to eat and drink. It's the harvest of the souls of men. 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 
That's what God desires. That's what God is calling us for. That is what God is asking us to do. And then be there many words for God. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of God. What sickle do we need to put in this harvest? The sickle number one is praise. Praise is a sickle for harvest. Be in the attitude of praise this month. Be a praise and a worshiper. If you are going to win souls, you must be in the attitude of praise. You don't frown your face and go to talk to people about Christ. Praise is a sickle of harvest. Number two, joy is a sickle for harvest. You need to be joyful. Carry a joyful countenance to go and win soul. Praise, joy, thanksgiving is a sickle for harvest. And the prayer is a symbol for harvest. You pray and then you launch out. You pray and then you launch out. You pray and then you launch out. We are going to continue tomorrow. I want to give somebody an opportunity. That's where it starts. Somebody is watching. You have not known Jesus Christ. But you want tonight to be your night of encounter. Please rise up wherever you are. Wherever you are watching, put your right hand on your chest. And say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I know I'm a sinner. I'm in need of a savior. Please forgive me my sin. Write my name in the book of life. Forgive me. Wash me with your blood and make me whole. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. I welcome you to the household of God. Congratulations. You are born again and you are born of God. No one can condemn you or accuse you of being a sinner. If you have done this genuinely tonight, maybe you must see that today you are returned back to God. Welcome back to the family of God. Hallelujah. You have become the first fruit of this service. And I welcome you and I congratulate you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I pray for you right now. The heaven will release the harvest on you. The earth will bring your harvest. I said the heaven will bring your harvest. And the earth will bring your harvest. The sun, the moon, and star, they will release your harvest. There it is your harvest. There it is your harvest. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your desires, your expectations. This month of September, you shall be granted. You shall be granted. You shall be granted. It is coming with speed. With speed. With speed. With speed. In the name of Jesus. Everyone watching that is sick, having any kind of ailment in your body, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You experience the heart of God. The heart of God tonight. You have sweet dreams tonight. In Jesus' precious name. Glory be to the love of God. Hallelujah. 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 Before we go, I forgot to say that. This is the first day of the month. Take a seat and appreciate God for this beginning of the month. Go to your phone. You will see a financial detail on the screen. Plant a seed. Plant a seed. Go ahead. Be encouraged. The wicked ones will not tell us to give. But they are giving in their shrine. They are giving to their witch doctors. They are giving to the people who want to kill you. They are putting all kinds of sacrifices on evil orders, but they say, God's children, don't give to your God. Because they know that the little you give to God, it becomes altar versus altar. And the altar of God and the altar of Satan, which one will win? Let nobody deceive you from giving to God. Especially in a ministry where God is saving souls. A ministry where righteousness is being preached. A ministry where the love of God is being practiced. I encourage you to give. I may give I'm encouraging you to give tonight. The first day of the month of September. Give and seal up these prophecies you receive. Go to the online. Hallelujah. I'll follow the details there. As long as you see foundation ministries there, go ahead and give. And the Lord will prosper your seed. Your hand will remain on top. And your hand will come speedily in the name of Jesus. Remember, a plowman shall overtake the river. As you are dropping that city tonight, in the next 24 hours, 
you already seen you already seen harvest coming. You already seen harvest coming. You already see harvest coming in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' wonderful name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Father, for everyone in the building, receive your seed, multiply it. Everyone spoken to my God, let me find expression in their life and in their families. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow is 6 p.m. You can't afford to miss it. Another dimension is coming to you again tomorrow. See you tomorrow by the message of God. I love you with the love of God. Good night and God bless.